Welcome back. So in this episode, we're going to talk about should you build a cargo trainer camper? There's some people that should, there's some people that shouldn't. Let's talk about it. So first off, before we get started, I just want to say whatever gets you out camping, that's great. You know, if it's a manufactured RV and you just don't have time, great. If it's a tent, if it's sleeping in the back of your truck, whatever works, just do it. Get out camping. In this episode, we are going to talk about cargo trailer conversions. Uh, it is a little bit of work, but what's the, the pluses and the negatives to it? And let's compare it to a manufactured RV. So a couple years ago when I was trying to decide whether to build a cargo trailer camper or not, I read a whole bunch of blogs and they didn't provide any information. They were more like a, just a manufactured blog. Uh, no one had really done one. And then I read a bunch of forums, but it was very difficult. No one really gave me some clear ideas. It just seemed like everybody was either for it or against it. So what I want to do in this video is try to give you as much information as you can get in order to make a good decision. So what I did is I visited a cargo trailer manufacturer in the area here, and then I visited an RV dealership. And I asked them, I told them what I was going to do, and then I asked them to give me their input. What do you think? So each one said different things, but I think we can break it down into a few different categories. So first off is construction. So let's talk about the construction of the traders. Second, design. And we'll talk about time and tools. And then we'll talk about the cost. And then we'll talk a little bit about finishes, but not much. So let's get into it. Let's get inside where it's a little bit quieter and let's discuss this. Okay, so you made it this far, that's great. So I'm just gonna give you a quick plug for my guide that I've put together on how to do this cargo trader conversion. So the link is right here. The link is right here down in the description. And what you'll find is it's on my website and in there you'll find that, that PDF guide. It's $15, it's over 90 pages long and it covers everything, uh, I feel anyways. All the questions that I had when I was putting together my cargo trailer. How do you do the wiring? How do you run the 120 volt? How do you do your plumbing? How do you do your heating? Um, the materials we're using, how do we build cabinets? All these different things that we're putting together to build our own custom trailer. So that's $15, the link is right here. Let's get started though. First of all, we're gonna talk about construction of our trailers. Now a cargo trailer is a welded box, really. The frame is welded, the walls, the, the supports in the walls are solidly welded to the frame. And then uh, the roof is solidly welded also to the walls. So basically you've got this solid welded structure. That's very advantageous, when, especially when you're doing off-road camping or rough camping, but really any type of camping. You know, you, if you're going down the road hitting lots of potholes and stuff, everything's moving. But having that solid box keeps everything stiff and um, strong, nicely secured to the walls. Uh, we can compare it to two types of manufactured trailers. First of all, there's uh, the cheaper kind of trailer. It's called a stick or a, a wood frame trailer. And what they do is they build the walls out of wood and then it's laminated with usually a thin, um, a thin, thin wood on the inside and an aluminum on the outside. And that's basically then just bolted to the frame. Now the frame is steel, but the walls are just wood. And so as that's going down the road, it's flexing. And then what happens when it's flexing is those uh, joints, uh, the seams open up and then water can get into those things. And then it rots out that wood. Then you have a soft or a leaking trailer. Now, what I've experienced is with this trailer, it's pretty solid and we go some really, really rough roads. Uh, just show you a couple clips here. But when my dad, he's got one of these wood frame trailers and it's a cute little trailer, real nice and light, 
but when he tries to come down even some of the minor ones his wall seams where the bathroom was meeting the walls were, were opening up Every, all the seams were opening up because it's just not built for anything I shouldn't even say extreme it's just not built for that flexing so that's the first kind of trailer but I don't think we can compare our cargo trailers to those because they're they're very cheap and it's just basically just to get you out camping you know maybe you're gonna go camping a couple times a year and nothing serious then why spend a whole fortune so then let's compare them to there's a type of manufactured trailer that it has an aluminum frame or that's made out of composite so these manufacturers such as the black series I don't know if you've seen those there's a 19 foot black series I'll just show it up here on the screen and I think the average the MSRP on it is right around a hundred thousand dollars that's for a 19 foot but it's a really nice trailer or we could go with the tab you know the tab 400 that's a, a pretty big size trailer I guess it's got a bathroom and a shower and all that stuff inside it that's roughly around fifty thousand dollars so we want when we're comparing our trailers we're just trying to decide whether to build a cargo trailer or to compare it to or to buy a trailer we want to compare try to compare apples to apples so composite frames or aluminum frames with a cargo trailer that'll help us when we get into talking about costs okay so that's our first category construction now let's move on to the next point design now design I think this is where a cargo trailer will win hands down there's no question about it because you can design it the way that you want and, and that's great you got 10 kids and you want to put them in bunks build it you know you want to shower inside do it you want a kitchen and shower maybe on the back do that you want a stove in it well put one in it anything that you can imagine you can build as long as it fits in the space that you bought <laughs> see we can craft the trailer to fit our specific needs like take me for example I enjoy um, extreme like winter camping I love it but when I'm out winter camping I want to be able to have a shower after hiking through the bush for a couple days so I built my trailer with the water tank inside uh, air vents so that it won't freeze my water pipes you can see here behind me they're inside the trailer everything is inside so that despite the fact that it was minus 38 degrees outside it was toasty warm inside so that's what I wanted and so I designed and built my trailer that way now try and find a manufactured trailer where everything is inside and you can run it right through the winter right in the middle dead winter you can go out and camp and run your water it's very difficult to do so see that's why for me the cargo trailer made sense it was basically the only way I could get what I wanted uh, another area is toy haulers you could take basically this trailer this is a 10 foot trailer you could jam this in the front of your toy hauler build a nice little camper and still have room for an ATV or if you wanted a longer toy hauler a couple ATVs or um, a side-by-side -side, whatever you want to do so you can custom build it to fit that so ca cargo trailer in this category wins hand down, hands down but and now this is a big but one thing we want to keep in mind is when we're designing and building our cargo trailers it's nice to be able to design them but we can make some big mistakes along the way mistakes that can almost make our trailer useless uh, hard to pull or really like squirrely on the road based on where we place our weight uh, take for example uh, just just let's just take one thing that I talk about in my guide uh, our weight distribution now come with me outside and let me just show you something here notice where the axle is placed in our cargo trailer do you see how it's far back now that wasn't done by mistake you know cargo trailer manufacturers they don't know what we're going to be hauling in our cargo trailer we could be hauling um, paintings you know something super light or having it empty or we could be hauling bricks or tools uh, they don't know lawnmower and it depends where you place that in here 
to how well that will pull because they need that nose weight to keep that the nose heavy to, to make it pull nicely. So they put the axles further back so that no matter what it's going to put some weight on the nose. But now notice how manufactured trailers are built. Notice where their axles are. Just take a look at this. Do you see how it's almost in the middle? So they're balancing out their weight better. They can put maybe uh, a nice queen bed and some sleeping arrangements up front, water tanks in the back. It all balances out. See, if we were to build our cargo trailers, and this is what I talk about in my guide, I see this a lot, is we put the water tanks up front. So we got 400 pounds of water up there. Then we've got a, you know another couple hundred pounds of batteries. And then we've got our black tank up there and our gray tank up there. And we've got uh, our shower up there and the shower is tiled surround and then we've got a tiled surround kitchen we are putting a ton of weight on our hitch and uh, standard vehicles they can only pull so much unless you want to buy a, a five ton dually truck to pull your trailer so weight placement is very important so this is where I think we can get in a lot of trouble building a cargo trailer Yes, it's nice to have the design, but if we do the design wrong, or if we do the basically the engineering of it wrong, we're going to be in trouble. We're going to have an unusable product. So that's just a caution. Yes, cargo traders win hands down this category, but we can really make a mistake here. Anyways, I kind of digress there. That's talking more about how to build a cargo trailer, not... Um, why to build a cargo trailer. So let's let's get back on track. Let's talk about now uh, time and tools. So in this category, <laughs> manufactured trailers, they win hands down, right? There's no competition. You can just drive onto the lot, pick one out, drive home with it. A couple hours, you're done. You got yourself a nice little trailer. The thing we want to keep in mind, we want to be realistic with the amount of time we have. To, to build a cargo trailer. We're going to talk about time in a second, but let's talk about tools. So let me just take you into my garage here and I'm going to show you some of my basic tools that I would think for me was necessary in building a cargo trailer. So this is our basic tools. I'd say real basic. You know, there's definitely more things you could buy, things that would make it easier, but these you'd need before you even get started. So for me, I use this pocket um, jig. It's for pocket screws, it, it, perfect for putting together your cabinets. So that's the pocket screw jig. A rivet gun, just some odds and ends, different uh, wrenches and pliers. Uh, this is my wire crimper and stripper. Driver, screwdriver basically, and uh, drill. A riv nut gun. PEX, this is for the PEX crimp rings, that's to do my plumbing. And then here we got the PEX cutter, or just a, a tubing cutter I guess. You could use it for the diesel heater tubing also. Obviously silicone gun. Down below we've, down below we've got a jigsaw, cutting out all the shapes and stuff. Skill saw, circular saw. This is a belt sander. This I use for a lot of the finishing, little pieces of wood, but you could also screw them on too. But that's just a finish nailer. Grinder. Socket set. And then just your basic hand tools. So if you don't have a basic hand tools, this is probably not a project for you. But if you've got some basic hand tools, maybe you've got a socket set and a few other of these things, and you just need to buy some of this other specialty stuff, again, this stuff's in the guide, kind of the tools that I use, especially for the... the the electrical and the plumbing. So that is a basic set of tools you'll need to be able to do this. But as you can see, it's really not that much. Um, like I mentioned in the guide, if you get the big sheets of plywood cut at the hardware store, that'll help immensely, even just trying to get them home. If we've got some of these basic tools, that's great, then no problem. But if we've got to go out and buy the tools, plus buy the trailer, buy the... It starts adding up, doesn't it? It can add up quite a bit. So that's just something to keep in mind. We're going to need those tools in order to build, to put this thing together. Okay, so let's talk about time. So time 
this is a tough one. You know, how I get that question all the time. How much time did it take you to build that? Well, for me, it took me three months to build it. That was uh, spare days, weekends. But how motivated are you? Uh, how, how skilled are you? Do you want to learn the skills? Are you desiring to, to, to learn how to do it? Are you going to be able to buy everything ahead of time and have it on hand? Or are you going to just kind of build it as you go, as you get some money? You know, that's an okay way to do it. Do you plan things out? I think that's one of the biggest things. Are you planning everything out? Or are we just rushing ahead, building it, putting it together, and then ugh, tearing it back out and redoing it? You know, I think that's where this guide will help a bit. Because following the steps and following um, the points, if we read right through it, we'll see what needs to be done when and uh, hopefully it will save you some time in building. So again, as I mentioned, my trailer, it took me three months to build. It was basically a winter project. And that's what I'd recommend. You know, if you're not camping over the winter, why not pick up a trailer, and, if that's what you plan on doing, and build it then. You know, three, four months, maybe five months later, you're out, you're out camping. So now let's talk about cost. Probably this is the one area where it got us into thinking about a cargo trailer camper. You know, you can go out and you can pick up a cargo trailer, brand new, which honestly, I don't know if I really recommend because you can buy a used one for almost half the price that's only maybe four years old. But anyways, let's talk about a new one because we're comparing it to a manufactured RV. You can go out and you can buy a brand new cargo trailer about this size, six by 10 or a seven, I mean a seven by 10 or a six by 12 for right around $6,000. So $6,000 for the box. That gives you the box and then you've got the brakes you add to, or some of them did have brakes, but some you gotta add brakes to. So that's your box to build in. But now you gotta add in all your materials. So think about your solar, your batteries, your fridge, your, your uh, burners, your a water tank, your water system, all these different little things. And a lot of little things they add up. Are you going to do really high-end finishes on the side? Like this this siding here, this uh, these walls are just made out of eight inch sheeting. It's just really thin plywood basically. And that's a good finish, I like it, works for me. But maybe you want pine boards or maybe you want uh, something a little bit fancier. Well, that's going to cost you. Where do you want to spend your money? You know, do you want to spend your money on finishes or do you want to spend your money on function? So when I worked out my budget for my trailer, I really focused on function. I wanted uh, function. And I think that's what's important with cost is do you have the plan ahead of time? You know exactly what you want and then start finding the parts. Don't start start the project and then just start buying stuff because it will add up astronomically and eventually you will be the same you'll be up there fifty thousand dollars or forty thousand dollars for a cargo trailer when you could have just gone out and bought a manufactured trailer one of these good quality manufactured trailers so just something to keep in mind with cost uh, in my guide i break down what each thing cost me you know my tr my fridge like my fridge, I bought used. I could find it used. The trailer, I already had the trailer, but I bought it used when I bought it years ago, and I think I spent, uh, I paid two grand for it. Um, the windows, I just got used out of an RV, so they were 25 bucks a window. Uh, anyways, you get the idea. You can spend as much as you want very quickly. You know, like my solar panels up top, they were expensive because I wanted a specific solar panel. I wanted a shingled solar panel. And I discussed that in the guide too. Anyways, each component has a reason. You want to have a reason for installing it. And also we're trying to keep an eye on our weight. So the cost is very, it's variable, but overall, I'll just give you a ballpark because you know, you've made it this far. You want to know, I would say, you can spend, to finish a, a six by, let's say a six by 12 trailer, uh, 
you could spend between 6,000 to 12,000 just in components inside the shell. So you buy whatever shell you want, but then once you throw shocks on it, once you throw um, brakes on it, once you throw propane system in it, all these little components, you're up there. You're up like six grand would probably be the low, 12 grand, depending on the finishes, be the high. So you're six to 12,000 bucks just inside that trailer. So what are you gonna buy your trailer for? Well, we just talked about it. You could buy six grand for a trailer. Now you're at $12,000 bottom, the bottom line. So if you don't really have, you know, 10, 12,000 bucks to start with, it's pretty hard to build a cargo trailer. You could um, do the shell, insulate it, camp in it. Then next year, as you get a little bit more cash, do a few more finishes. But a lot of the finishes, I mean, a lot of the components need to be put in order. You know, like you got to have the electrical in before you start uh, doing your cabinets and stuff. You have to do um, your solar system, you know, you're running your wires in the wall. There's just different things you got to keep in mind in building. So it's it's a little bit difficult to do it as you get cash, but it can be done as long as you've got that plan and you stick with the plan. So now a manufactured trailer, the cost. Well, you're spending a lot of money. They're a fortune. You know, 50 grand, $100,000, 50 to 100,000. That's what you're looking at for a nice, good quality, um, composite framed trailer, something that's gonna last. And I mean, those are the ones that you really wanna buy because then they hold their value. You don't want something that you buy and then it depreciates like crazy. You want to hold your value. So that, that gives you a ballpark of what the two, two prices are. And again, you shop around, you could probably find a manufactured composite trailer that's used, that's got really been treated, you know, babied for a nice price. Or you could shop around and buy a cargo trailer that there was one just a little while ago on Facebook Marketplace and uh, the guy had used it for his graphic sign business and he had graphics all over it. It was two years old and it was half the price of a new cargo trailer. Beautiful little trailer. So you could have picked up that and then started building right away. So price, cost, it's, very, it's a variable, right? How cheap do you want to be with it? How quickly do you want to get it done? Also, are you going to have to pay some trades to come in and do some work? So that's just a few things to keep in mind. And then the finishes. So the finishes on a cargo trailer, I think are not quite as nice as a manufactured trailer, especially because we're talking about these high-end manufactured trailers. You know, you've got a manufactured trailer, they've got an assembly line, they're putting them together. If there's an issue, they're fixing the issue. With a cargo trailer, you know, like I've got some uh, wood that's got a little bit of a scratch in it. I've got a few paint runs. I'm okay with it. I'm all right with that. But you probably wouldn't want that in a manufactured trailer that you just spent $100,000 on. So, yeah. So your finish, I think, would be better in a manufactured trailer. Unless you're really detail-oriented. And I'm not really detail-oriented. But teach his own. Okay, so that's it. I hope that gave you enough information. Some things to think about. Uh, to make this decision because it is a big decision but overall I'd say for me a cargo trailer checks so many boxes when I was thinking about doing it you know I could get the design I wanted that I could not get manufactured I could build it for a fraction of the price and um, I've gone places with this thing that I would never take a manufactured trailer. If I bought even a night, one of those nice ones for $100,000, I would not be driving it through the bushes with trees scratching it. And But I do with this. I don't care. It's great. It's funny when I'm going down these trails, these beautiful lakes, you'll pass right near the road the, by the highway basically is all these big beautiful RVs. And then a little bit further in, they're a little smaller RVs. But nobody is down by the lake because they don't want to take their trailer down there. But that's why I built this. I wanted it basically like a tent that I could tow. <laughs> so that was specific for me. It, it fit all my check boxes. And I had the time and I had the tools. So it was basically a win-win. 
So anyways, I hope that helped. Please, uh, let's discuss it below. Let me know what you think. Is a cargo trailer camper a good idea? Why? Or why not? Because it's good to put the information out there so that everybody makes a good decision, you know, depending on their own personal circumstances. And everybody's different. But again, whatever gets us out camping, that's the point. So I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next one. Happy camping, meanwhile.